Greetings to all. Welcome to Future of Business Academy. Today we are going to see August 5th daily current affairs. So today we are going to discuss the topics of ASI to copy stone inscriptions onto paper in Tripur. So which comes under prelims perspective. Next our topic is about law ministry report flags infrastructure challenges in countries district courts which comes under GS2 Indian polity. Next Sara Abraham joining of Indian art passes away. So, we have to know under the prelims perspective. What do scientists make of the budget? So, this comes under GS3 under Indian economy. Next, four ring butterfly, which we have to know about new species. Then, editorial analysis and finally, the international organization topic. So, our first topic of today is ASI to copy stone inscriptions onto paper in Tirupur. So, we have to know about the news first. A team from Archaeological Survey of India, that is ASI, Mysore recently copied important inscriptions at Taleshwara Temple, Kovila Palayam using the Estampage method. What method? Estampage method. So, eight inscriptions dating from 9th to 12th centuries were recorded. The findings including hero stones and sculptures will be studied and reported. Now, the inscriptions of Tirupur. So, first we have the historical significance. Tirupur located in the Tamil Nadu, India is known for the ancient inscriptions that provided insights into the regional historical and cultural heritage. With this, we have to know about the Chola dynasty. So, many inscriptions dated back to the Chola dynasty 9th to 13th centuries reflecting administrative, religious and economic aspects of the period. The temples has inscriptions are often found in temples detailing denotations, land grants and contributions made by kings, merchants and local allies. The language is the majority of inscriptions are in Tamil though some are in Sanskrit. They use the Tamil Brahmini script and later the Vatelita script. Next the notable sites are Key sites with inscriptions included Kalyana Venkateshwara Temple. Kalyana Venkateshwara Temple. Talishwara. Sorry, Talishwara Temple and various ancient Shiva temples. Next, the cultural insights. The inscriptions reveal details about trade, social, structure, and religious practices prevalent in region. Next, the archaeological survey of India. It is under the Ministry of Culture. It is the premier organization for archaeological research and protection of cultural heritage of the nation. It administers more than three 1650 ancient monuments, archaeological sites and remains of national importance. It activates include carrying out serves and aquatrium remains, exploration and excavation of archaeological sites, conservation and maintenance of protected monuments. It was founded in 1861 by Alexander Cunningham, the first director general of ASI. Alexander Cunningham is also known as the father of Indian archaeology. The estampage method. What is this estampage method? So it involves creating a detailed and exact replica of inscriptions by placing ink paper over the engraved surface and rubbing it to transfer the inscription impression. This technique captures fine details of the original text, making it easier for scholars to study and analyze the inscriptions without directly handling or distributing the original artifacts. It is commonly used in epigraphy for documentation and preservation purpose. So with this, we have the UPC prelims question which have been asked in 2023. With reference to the Indian history, Alexander Ray, A.H. Longhurst, Robert Siebel, James Burgess and Walter Elliot were associated with. So the answer is A. Archaeological excavations. So our next topic is about law ministry report flags infrastructure challenges in countries district courts. So at first we have to know about the news. A recent ministry of law and justice report reveals critical infrastructure deficiencies in district courts including severe overcrowding, inadequate IT facilities, lack of video conferencing in jails and missing fire safety equipment. The study covering 20 district courts across 10 states 
highlight significant barriers efficient justice delivery now we have to see about the findings of the report so first the overcrowding severe overcrowding in our courtrooms lack of space forces advocates litigators and parties to stand next the accessibility issues so bar rooms often located far from courtrooms causing dissatisfaction among advocates next the it infrastructure only 45 percentage of judicial officers have electronically display facilities 20 percent is still under installation next the video conferencing 32.7 percentage of district courts lack video conferencing facilities in jails next the fire safety 39 percentage of judicial officers report no fire safety equipment in courtrooms and next the infrastructure shortage in district courts in that we'll be seeing the implications of justice delivery so first in infrastructure shortage we see delayed proceedings in delayed proceedings overcrowded courtrooms and inadequate space contribute to delays in case hearings and decision making affecting timely justice next accessibility issues so in this the distance between bar rooms and courtrooms hampers advocates efficiency and affects legal proceedings next the reduced efficiency so lack of modern it infrastructure limits the use of electronic tools and hampers case management and record keeping next the limited communication And this is the limited communication, absence of video conferencing facilities in jails impedes effective communication between the judiciary and incarcerated individuals. And finally, the safety concern. The lack of fire safety equipment raises risk for courtroom, personal and litigants, geoparadising safety and security. Now, what are the steps taken by the government here? So the Indian government has initiated several steps for upgrading the state court infrastructure, including the implementation of the national mission for justice, delivery and legal reforms in 2011. The mission aims to improve court facilities through increased funding for construction and renovation projects. The e-court project is enhancing IT infrastructure, including electronic case management systems and video conferencing facilities. Scheme for Infrastructure Development of District and Subordinate Courts Centrally Sponsored Scheme for Development of Infrastructure Facilities in District and Subordinate Courts by providing financial assistance to state UT governments in prescribed funds sharing pattern. So with this we have the UPC main prelims questions which have been asked in 2020. In India, the term public key infrastructure is used in the context of Digital security infrastructure, food security infrastructure, health and care education infrastructure, telecommunication and transportation infrastructure. The answer is digital security infrastructure. Our next topic is Sarah Abraham, Domini of Indian Art Passes Away. So we have to know about her. So Sarah Abraham, a pioneer figure of contemporary Indian art, passed away in Chennai. Born into a prominent family in Kerala, she played a crucial role in nurturing post-independence Indian art, leaving behind a legacy through her Kala Yatra exhibitions. Now, what are the contribution of Sara to contemporary Indian art? The first thing is innovative approach. In innovative approach, she is known for her experimental techniques in contemporary Indian art, blending traditional and modern forms. Next is mixed media. In this, she often uses mixed media, including photography, painting and installation art to explore themes of identity, memory and urban life. Next, social commentary. So, Abraham works frequently addresses social issues, offering commentary on gender, migration, and cultural dislocation. Next, exhibitions. Her art has been featured in prestigious exhibitions and galleries in India and internationally, enhancing the global visibility of contemporary Indian art. 
Next, educational influence. She was involved in teaching and mentoring influence in the next generation of artists through her academic roles. So with this, we have the UPSC practice question. Consider the following statements about Madhubani paintings. They are made in same format of frescoes on the walls of the houses. Cow dung is used as base and rice is used to paint. They are also made on handmade papers and clothes. So here the answer is B. The first and third statement is correct. Our next topic about what do scientists make of the budget? So we have to know about the news first. The union budget highlights significant investments in advanced technology missions, including space, quantum and clean energy sectors. It emphasizes R&D in critical areas like climate resilient agriculture and clean energy. However, concerns persist about the adequacy of funding, operationalizing of key research initiatives and equitable resource distribution. So now what are the priority areas, productivity and resilience in agriculture, energy security and manufacturing and services? So the union budget emphasizes transforming agriculture research to enhance productivity and climate resilience initiatives such as Speed breeding platforms have been established to accelerate the development of climate resilient crop varieties, allowing multiple generations of crops to grow in a single year. Next, in energy security, we could find the budget prioritizes energy security with a focus on research and development of small and modular nuclear reactors and advanced thermal power plants. The proposed critical minerals mission is expected to enhance research in critical minerals essentially for clean energy technologies and next is the manufacturing and services the budget highlights the importance of enhancing domestic manufacturing capabilities and attracting foreign investment through initiatives like production linked incentive scheme plans for plug and play industrial parks in 100 cities are expected to facilitate the uptake of intelligence technologies and boost manufacturing output the focus on commercializing technologies with private sector involvement aims to strengthen to manufacturing sector's contribution to the economy. Next, what are the concerns about the sidelining of basic research and stagnation research funding? So in this, we have to see about first sidelining of basic research. So under this, we have a board focus on advanced technology and limited funding for basic research and disparity in funding distribution. Next is stagnation in research funding. Stagnation in research funding. So in stagnation research funding, we see actual expenditure versus allocation, demand for increased funding and impact of the inflation. So with this, we have the UPSC prelims question which have been asked in the year 2020. Along with the budget, the finance minister also places other documents before the parliament, which include the macroeconomic framework statement. The Oxford document is presented because this is mandated by the answer is D. Provisions of the Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act 2003. So our next topic is about four ring butterfly. So recently, a four ring butterfly was rediscovered in Namdapa National Park after 61 years. So we have to know about this four ring butterfly. The great four ring, Yeptima cantiliae, a species of Satriarne butterfly. It was photographed during the survey of document the butterfly diversity in the Mia range of the Nandapawa National Park during 2018 to 19. It was identified based on general morphological patterns and habitat. It was last reported in 1957 from Eastern Assam, Margarita. It considered a rich genius of the family Nymphaldia, which has some 6,000 species of butterflies. The highest Eptima diversity is in China, particularly in Yunana. Shaichan provinces. The diversity is also vast Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar apart from the northeastern part of the India. Next we have to know about the Namdapa National Park. It is located in the state of 
Arunachal Pradesh. It is flanked by the Kai Hills to the south and southeast by the Himalayan to the north. It is located between the Akkabam range of the Mishmi Hills and Patkai range. The region is part of both Paleocritic and Indomalayan biogeographic areas. Tamdapa is the name of the river which originates from the Bhabam and meets the No Ding River. Here the flora and fauna we have to know. The fauna it is the only park in the world to have four feline species of a big cat named the tiger, panthera, tigress, leopard, panthera, paradis, snow leopard, panthera, unke and clouded leopard, neophilus, nebulosa. So a number of or lesser cats. Next, the power flora is evergreen forest, moist deciduous forest, subtropical forest, temperate forest, and alpine. So, with this, we have the UPSC previous year question paper which have been asked in prelims 2016. Research our scientists have discovered a new and distinct species of banana plant which attains height of about 11 meters and orange colored fruit pulp in which a part of India has been discovered. So, here the answer is A Andaman Islands. Our next topic is about editorial analysis. Our editorial analysis topic is balancing competition and sustainability for India. So it discusses global and national frameworks like SEBI sustainability reporting in India and initiatives by Japan and EU to integrate sustainable into competition law. It emphasizes the need for India to align competition policies with sustainability goal and to achieve net zero emission. So we have to know about market dynamics here. The markets have evolved from the batter system to digital marketplace with system supply and demand being the primary force that determine the prices and consumer preference. Climate change disturbs the supply side of markets causing the mismatch between supply and demand which affects consumer demand and overall economy. So with this we have to know about sustainable reporting in India. In 2023, the Securities Exchange Board of India that is SEBI introduced a framework for corporate sustainability reporting. The business responsibility and sustainability report framework requires companies to disclose their value chain environment impact. So this framework aims to enhance transparency, combat greenwashing and the ensure sustainability benefits very much through the value chain. So what are the guidelines of the European Commission? The European Commission has revised guidelines on horizontal agreements to include sustainable agreements. Concerns arise only if such agreements entitle serious competition restrictions or produce negative efforts contrary to Article 101, Class 1. The objectives include addressing climate change, reducing pollution, limiting natural sources, uses and promoting innovation. Next, we have to know about business responsibility and sustainable report. So, in 2021, the Securities and Exchange Board of India, CB, introduced the business responsibility and sustainable report. Framework mandated that the top 1 lakh listed, sorry, 1,000 listed companies in India disclose their performance and environment, social and governance, ESG partners. So this initiative aimed to enhance transparency and encourage responsible business practice building on earlier business responsibility report BDBRR introduced in 2011. So next we have to know about the importance of this sectoral to sustainability. So they are diverse economic sectors, government initiatives, green manufacturing, renewable energy commitment, collaboration and policy framework are the importance of the sectoral contribution. Next, we have to know about Securities and Exchange Boards of India, that is SEBI. It is regulatory authority overseeing India's securities and commodity market. It was established in the year 1988. So, a non statutory body. It operates under the purview of the Ministry of Finance. The structure includes chairman nominated by gold mem GOI members from the Union Ministry of Finance, the Reserve Bank of India and the others. The headquarters is in Mumbai with the regional office in Ahmedabad, Kolkata, Chennai and Delhi. Next we have to know about Competition Commission of India that is CCI. It is a statutory body established under the Competition Act 2002 by the Vajpayee government. It aims to promote sustainable competition and protest commissioner interest and ensure freedom of trade. So that's all from this editorial analysis. 
our next topic is about international monetary front so we'll be seeing under this an international organization so first we have to know about imf the imf was initially taken birth in 1945 as the part of britain woods britain woods agreement it was made to encourage the financial cooperation internationally by developing system of convertible currencies at fixed exchange rates it tries to promote global economic growth and financial stability reduces poverty and encourages international poverty AMI aims itself as a global lender of last resort to national governments and also lending power support of exchange rate. The pool funds for members nations are known as quotas generate most of the IMF. The economic and financial importance of the countries in the world decide the size of the member quotas. So IMF publish a report known as World Economic Outlook. So the report analyzes the world economy in the nearer medium term. Then we have to know about SDR. It is a rights is an international serve as a which is created by the IMF. The main purpose of SDR is supplement the member countries' official reserves. The IMF when created it defined as an equivalent to a fraction amount to the gold which was equivalent to the US dollar. So it is to be noted that SDR is not a currency. It is classified as the potential claim of the freely usable currencies of IMF members. Therefore, SDRs can provide country with liquidity whenever needed. So it consists of a basket of currencies which are US dollar, Euro, Chinese Yuan, Japanese Yen and British Pound. So then who can hold this SDRs? It is important to note that private entities and individuals are not entitled to hold SDRs. Only IMF members and IMF itself is authorized to hold SDRs. The IMF has the final authority to approve whether other holders such as central banks and multilateral development banks can hold SDR or not. Now, finally, we have to know about Britain Wood Conference 1944. It was held in 1944 in New Hampshire. USA. It established the International Monetary Fund and World Bank. The IMF was designed to aid economical development and promote monetary cooperation and stability globally. So to read this document, you can visit our website. Our website link has been provided in the description. To get more daily current affairs videos, follow our YouTube channel, also our Telegram channel. Thank you.